Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome retro art feature that was recently added by the guys at the Lip Retro team. I'm going to show you how to use it. It is actually a really big step forward for retro emulation on PC. This is one of the best features to come to emulation in a very, very long time, and I don't think it's getting enough attention. It's called Run Ahead Latency Reduction. In layman's terms, controller lag. We can go ahead and completely alleviate any controller lag while we're using RetroArch using this new Run Ahead Latency Reduction feature that's been added. We can get better latency than the real hardware itself. I've heard a lot of complaints about controller lag. Every time I do a video on my own channel on a new controller or new hardware, they're always asking, how's the input lag? I've been doing emulation on low-end computers and PCs for so long that I don't notice it anymore. I have actually learned to compensate for lag without even noticing it. But with this new feature, we don't have to worry about lag anymore. Now this isn't just a set it up and go with every single game. This is a per game basis. We're not gonna get into all the technical details about this. All I can say is it just works when you got it set up correctly. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, give you a little info here. Every game has a certain built-in amount of lag frames. In order for the run ahead system to perform as expected, you should set it to the same amount of frames you need per game. For example, if a game like Super Mario World for SNES has a guaranteed two frame input lag, for the best results, set run ahead frames to two. Now there's an easy way to do this. We do have to start the game. We're gonna pause it and we can count the lag frames when we're jumping or punching or even if you're playing a race game, turning into a corner. I'm gonna show you how this works with an NES game and an SNES game. Theoretically, this should work with any core in RetroArch, but some cores perform better than others. I'm gonna start Hagani for SNES, one of my favorite games. So the core I'm using in RetroArch here is SNES 9X. Like I mentioned, it should work with any SNES core. The controller I'm using here is the Xbox One controller. Really doesn't matter as long as it works with RetroArch. I'm gonna start the game. And since I'm emulating this on PC, I have a keyboard close by and we're gonna need that keyboard. We're gonna have to pause the game and then advance the frames to see how far our lag is behind. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard. Now I'm gonna hold jump on my controller, which in this case is A. I'm gonna move back to my keyboard and press K once, twice. So this is two frames behind because I'm starting to jump here. I just advanced by two frames using the K on my keyboard. Retroarch is paused. I now know that I'm behind by two frames. So it's very easy to set this up. I'm gonna use my menu toggle hotkey. I set mine up as L3 and R3. That'll bring us into the retro arch menu. I will scroll down to latency. And now I'm gonna scroll down to run ahead to reduce latency. I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna set my number of frames to run ahead to two because that's what I needed for this game. We're gonna go back into the game I'm gonna press B and I'm going to resume. Now that we're back in the game, I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to pause it. I'm gonna hold jump on my controller and I'm gonna press K. I should only have to press K once to advance the frame one frame and my character should start the jump sequence. As you can see, it's now only one frame behind, which is totally perfect for something like this. Better input latency than the real hardware itself. It really does make a big difference. Now I know some people aren't gonna, you know, really utilize this much. And to tell you the truth, like I mentioned before, I'm so used to running with a little bit of latency that I've had to get used to playing it with none at all. I've just played on ARM single board computers and low end PCs for so long, I've learned to compensate for that latency. And it's a little odd when you first start out, but it's amazing how fast the response is now. We're gonna move over to another emulator. I'm gonna exit back into RetroArch and I wanna save this configuration just for this game. So my latency here's set on two and I want it to only work with this game. I'm gonna scroll down to configuration override options, 
save game override. Now it will only save this for this certain game here. So every time I start this game, I will have my frames set ahead in the latency area to two. So I don't have to mess with this anymore. I'm now going to exit RetroArch and we're gonna try with NES now, Mega Man 2. I'm using Quick NES for the core here. Shouldn't matter though. We'll just start the game up. Go with Heat Man. Now you can always set this up for your shoot or jump, it shouldn't really matter. Both frames are going to be delayed just as much as the other. P on my keyboard, hold jump, press K, that's one, two, so two frames for this game also. A lot of these games that I've been running into are two to three, but you kind of need to watch it. Some of them might be a little more. Mainstream games like this are probably going to be around two. Now I'm going to exit back out. Scroll down to latency. Turn run ahead to reduce latency on and set my number of frames to two. Now there's some other settings you can tweak in here like run ahead, use second instance. This will run the core and game two times. You're going to need a decent PC to do this for higher end emulators. You can also set hard GPU sync on. But I noticed just setting the run ahead to reduce latency, setting it to the correct number of frames, works really well with most systems. I'm going to scroll down to configuration override options, save game overrides, we'll back up, resume the game, press P, hold jump, press K. One time I should start the jump sequence. There we have it, no lag whatsoever from my controller to RetroArch. This is actually a really big feature that shouldn't be overlooked so easily. I know it might not matter to a lot of people, but there are a lot of die-hard retro emulation fans who have been waiting for something like this for a very long time. And it's finally here. I think it's a great little feature. You're going to have to experiment with it. To tell you the truth, most games are probably going to be two to three frames, but you really need to make sure you're getting it right. Some might be a little higher, some might be lower. You never really know, so you're going to need to pause it, hold your jump, punch, or turn button, whatever kind of game you're playing, advance the frames until the character starts to do that action on screen, and count the number of times you pressed K, or count the number of times you advance the frame. For this, it was two, and it's working really, really well. There is no input lag in this game whatsoever now. Really cool feature for RetroArch. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I just really wanted to show you how to use this. Now, like I mentioned, I'm using an Xbox One controller, but you might even run into some controllers that have a little more input lag through USB than this controller does. This will also help with that. There's all kinds of case scenarios where this will come in really, really handy. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you could, subscribe to the channel for more great content. And like always, thanks for watching.